to announce that I have just won the Da Vinci Laureate Award. Now, I am so excited to go and receive this award and go to South Africa in general because of three different reasons. Number one, I am so excited to go there because the thing is, I am so excited to go to a place with such prestige and to see such a blooming and strong and great school of tech come out of this country with such a great history. And so I am really excited to receive this award in general because it's always an honor to me when I receive an award. I have two additional reasons. Number two, the second reason I would like to go there is because I love the beauty of such a country. Now the thing is, I have never really related to anything with Africa before. And I honestly have absolutely no idea. A few minutes ago, I just Googled up South African cuisine and I don't really know really anything about the place because I uh, am really thrilled to get a perspective on such a new culture, to get such a good opportunity to uh, do something like this. It just feels so cool to me to get this new opportunity. Now, uh, when I traveled abroad, the two other times I have gone into other countries, their culture, uh, I've at least mildly understood their culture. Canada, the culture is mostly the same to its southern neighbor, the US. And in India, I've, uh, I didn't, didn't really relate that much, but my family has a secret connection with India. And my family comes all the way from India. Now, I at least had some understanding in the language of the culture. But the thing is, in South Africa, I am dipping my finger into something completely new that I haven't tried before. Now, especially because I haven't even made a trip to the continent before or learned anything about the continent. So I am extremely excited because I know nothing about Africa except in respects to ge geography. So I am really excited uh, to go to this place and see such beauties. And I cannot wait to see whatever is there. But the third reason is the reason that I am most inspired to go to Africa. The third reason I would love to go to South Africa is because I'm inspired by the fight and war for peace and freedom that has occurred in the country. But this didn't go the way that you would expect a typical war to go. This didn't go with guns or bombs, and there were only a, a little attacks from the opposition. But I admire how beautifully the African National Congress handled the situation and fought for peace with peace. And so that you do not need fire to fight fire, and you do not need hate to fight hate. You only need peace. I, in particular, admire how Nelson Mandela, uh, who is sitting right above me at this instant, and Desmond Tutu, uh, both very prominent figures in uh, changing the apartheid system, uh, fought uh, and struggled for peace and freedom. And how they engineered peace without using anything of war. I am personally so inspired by that. And that is one of the key reasons that I want to go to this country because of my inspiration uh, and how they and their message inspires me to tell the world that you can fight for peace with peace. I will be talking about three things at the commencement speech. Number one, education is a double-edged sword. Now, education is not always the hero most imagine it to be. Education is not the sword. Education is the handle. Technology is the blade. Now, with education comes discovery, comes technological advancement. And tech can work for good of humans, but it can also work for bad. Tech can lead to more peace and more innovation. Now, it can get humans further and can change things that uh, will endanger humans. But it can also change the world in negative ways. It can make weapons of war even better than they were intended to be. Like a few hundred years ago, say in the 1600s or 1700s, war wouldn't completely end the world when they were fighting with muskets and cannons and swords and bows. 
Yeah, that war wouldn't end the world then. All war would do is kill hundreds of thousands of people horribly, but it wouldn't end the entire world. However, as weapons got better, uh, and in the 1900s, it invented the nuclear bomb. And that changed the dynamic of war so much more. Now just a single bad exchange or single conflict could lead to total annihilation of humanity and the earth as we knew it. So, technology uh, can be used for good, but also can be used for bad. Make no mistake, Osama bin Laden was an engineer. He just wasn't using it positively. So, that is the second point I will be talking about. Education isn't always you know, what it's painted out. Education isn't what it's made out to be. And the third thing I would like to talk about is the, dis uh, the discovery technology feedback loop. It's actually really strong and really weird. When discovery leads to better technology. Mm. For example, when we were Newton discovered or wrote the equation F equals MA, then we got so much more. Like steam engines, trains, vehicles, uh, athlete machines, quantum, uh, quantum mechanics, relativity, and we uh, unlocked so much more in technology. But we also uh, taught us the principles of motion, which gave us vehicles of war like tan. Second big leap was the oh, I you, you could say Faraday the gate of electricity because that led to light bulbs refrigeration of food uh, electricity computers uh, microchips uh, microscopes so much more but it also led to us being able to hack out billions of dollars from our friends and peers using viruses and also gave us real guns via induction so the, the third big leap was by Einstein when he discovered nuclear energy with a bunch of his fellow scientists. And nuclear energy could change, uh, the, uh, could change the climate change problem and completely change the world of renewables. Um, the, climate change, the, the climate change effect hasn't exactly come into effect yet. Hopefully it will soon. <clears throat> but it changed the world in good ways. But it also allowed us to invent the nuclear bomb, which killed millions of people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So, it can work for good and for bad. And the theory of everything discovery may also work for good and for bad. Who knows? Discovery uh, and technology, uh, discovery and technology can be used for good and for bad. And uh, discovery can also lead to better technology, which leads to better discovery. Uh, we invented the microscope using discoveries of physics. But then we used the microscope to make more discoveries, uh, especially in the biological field. Hmm. So that went from discovery to technology to discovery. And now we are inventing technologies to counter biological diseases. And so it, it, a feedback loop, it just takes a while to happen. Now, human and AI be good, they can be not so good. For example, some of the not so good effects can include the economy plummeting because of no uh, labor force. So, that's a small bad effect. On the upside, there can be effects such as the human labor decreasing, which means that us lazy humans will finally be able to take a nap and freaking rest. Those are small side effects, but there were big side effects too. Big good side effects and big bad side effects. Good side effects include the possibility for us to colonize the galaxy with AI's help, the ability for AI to build even stronger robots that will help us um, develop a better technology, and AI in general improving our technology. However, bad side effects include AI gaining content and taking over the world while subjecting humans to slavery, the plot of the Matrix summarized. The AI creating a singularity by creating a better AI, which creates a better AI, which creates a better AI, until eventually AI making AIs which get even more powerful to take over the world. So there were good side effects and there were some very bad side effects. So, uh, as I said, everything is a double-edged sword, even technology. So, basically, the subject of my speech is technology can be good and technology can be bad. 
We just have to learn how to make it good and not bad. We'll be the subject of my commencement speech for all the graduates who have gotten their PhD here at the Da Vinci Institute of Technology Management. And I would like to thank you all for listening to my fundraiser speech. Uh, as you can see, I am really enthusiastic about going to South Africa. So, I would love it if you could help fundraise our trip to South Africa by going to the link in the description down below. Now, whenever the speech comes out on October 18th, I would love it if you could listen, so please stay tuned to be notified. Thank you!